So if we move on to the technical side of the game, um, in terms of your practice and a standard sort of session, what would it normally look like? Would it just be uh, batting dominant or is it pretty evenly split? Yeah, so it's a regular training session. Um, would usually consist of getting there, um, you know, a bit of a warm up game, team warm up game, you know, whatever it is. If it's a bit of football, a Clamorgan, or uh, we play this sort of abbreviated tennis game, volleyball um, at Queensland. Um, uh, for Australia, we might play a bit of touch footy or something. Um, and then you sort of go into your, to your skills. So usually for me, I get the pads on straight away and, and, and face the bowlers. So when the bowlers are warm, you know, get in there, face the bowlers for about 45 minutes. Um, then I usually take the pads off, have a bit of a bowl for half an hour. Um, maybe then go over, do some catching, do some fielding, and then get back into the nets for about another 45 45 minutes um, and and hit some more balls. Um, uh, so that's usually with the sidearm or the wanger um, or if there's net bowlers, they'll face them depending on um, how close to the game day it is. Um, yeah, and, and for me, you know, when I'm in there, it's all about trying to get the feel, you know, making sure, you know, everything's feeling good, you know, certain shots that I'm, you know, my forward defence is feeling good and that, you know, everything's in place and that, you know, I'm playing the, the shots well. And then um, if there's anything specific that I feel like I haven't nailed down at the end of the session, then I might get a little bit of specific stuff on that um, the next day. So I'll start off with that, make sure, you know, I get a little bit of that, you know, the, the things that I'm looking to, to do if that's, you know, my pull shot doesn't feel completely right or my drive, um, I'll start with that and then sort of, um, you know, go back into that same routine. And then you, you're touching it there. Do you have a preference in facing bowlers, side arms, or, or um, bowling machines? Um, oh, look, I think they all serve a great purpose. Um, I, I like facing bowlers. Um, you know, the contest of getting in the contest. I, I think there's a time where you, you really do need to make sure your, your game is, is organised and your techniques in order. And some, some people like doing that on the bowling machine. Some people can find that rhythm and that technique on the sidearm um, with a good wanger or a good sidearmer. You know, you get your drives in, you get your pulls, you get your cuts, you get, your, you know, off your legs, straight drives. You can get all of that in. Um, but it just depends, um, you know, at the moment, if I've got a little bit more time off, I'll definitely go back and do a bit of work on the bowling machine, work on um, some specific shots that I feel like I'm not nailing completely or not hitting that well and make sure I get those technical elements and get those cues back in my head about what things I really need to make sure I do um, with those shots. Um, yeah, so that's sort of in my, you know, how I go about it. Um, but like I said, some people hate facing the bowling machine. Um, I certainly don't. Some people hate facing sidearm. They like bowlers. Some people prefer not to face the bowlers because, you know, they want to maybe stay in a more, you know, more technical focus in the nets and they'll use their energy of, you know, that game sort of intensity uh, in a game. And then with regards to your preparation, does that vary from test matches to one day as sort of what you do before a game? Yeah, certainly. Um, I always like having a, like a, a big hit the day before uh, and then the morning of, you know, I might come in and, and face a few, uh, face a few bowls, you know, face a few, a top, a top up, you know, in the, when I get there early, get in the nets. Um, and yeah, there's a few, you know, slightly different things I, I, I work on. Um, it's mainly in the batting, maybe my setup slightly different um, depending on what situation I come out in. And, um, you know, instead of leaving the ball, I'm probably just playing that late cut, dab it down to third man to get the one is probably the differences in terms of uh, battings, like in terms of skill. Um, yeah, so they're the two focus points um, that, that that change. But, yeah, not too much in the actual preparation and the mental side. And then with regards to sort of before you're going out to bat, is it very much a, a sit down, just focus on what's going on in the game? Or do you like to hit a few balls, like you said, b before, almost immediately before going out, or even tap a few balls on the bat? Uh, everyone's obviously different. Or are you very much a focus on the game and then just go out to bat? Yeah, um, certainly. I, I certainly don't sit still. Um, I'm always talking. Um, uh, it's sort of, you know, how I, you know, deal with, uh, you know, the nerves or, you know, people would say I'm, I'm talking. 
um, trying to keep an eye out on the game, but not be too focused. It's quite a fine line. You know, you don't want to mentally drain yourself, but you want to make sure you're still watching the game, observing, making sure that you know what's happening in the game. Um, yeah, so, I mean, they're things that I that I sort of, you know, learn from, view, understand. Um, and then, yeah, just go out there and, and try and read the game as best as I can, make sure I'm focused. And, yeah, that's sort of it. I'm not too fast about too much else. And then is there, you, you, men, you mentioned it there about focusing on the game. Um, is there a way that you, uh, or a technique you use to sort of switch off in between balls or if you're at the non-strikers? Obviously, if you're batting for sort of a day and a half in a test match, you're going to be pretty mentally drained by the end of that, regardless of what you're doing. Yeah, um, yeah, certainly is. Um, that You know, that's why it's so important to have routines. Um, you know, when I come back and scratch middle twice, that's sort of my cue to get back into that mental focus, that bubble, that box. Um, and then tapping the bat sort of reiterates that to me. So, you know, I do two taps uh, and then I do one tap and then look up and, and sort of wait for the bowler to, to run in. Um, so that's how I stay present um, when the bowler is running in. In between balls, um, I sort of, you know, depending on what type of ball it was, I just try and switch off and maybe look around, people watch a bit, try and see what's going on, listen to sounds that's happening out there on the ground. If there's, you know, a plane flying over or if there's birds or if there's, you know, you know, even listening to the chat of the of the bowlers and just letting yourself be amused by, by it and just sort of going away and then bringing yourself back in to focus uh, when when it's game time. And then you, you mentioned your sort of routine there. Is there anything that you do before you go out to bat in terms of superstitions, like left pad on first, right pad on first, or certain gloves? Um, no, not, not really. No real superstitions. Um, oh, look, I always like tucking the bales in, making sure the bales aren't hanging over the edge of the stumps. Right. So um, that's one of the first things I always do. You know, I come in, uh, ask for centre, ask for leg stump, um, and then I sort of observe, check the stumps, fix the stumps, like fix the bales up if they're hanging out, um, and then sort of face up and, and watch the ball. Um, but yeah, apart from that, not not too many, um, not not too many things. I mean, there's probably a few more I can rattle off there that I you, know, that you think of. Um, but yeah, look, I'm not not particularly superstitious, but I do do a lot of things that just you know with habit and routine that have just sort of become a part of my game. Yeah. Yeah. And then in relation to sort of goal setting, do you set goals ahead of the year, ahead of the series, ahead of certain matches, or is it very much just play the match as it is at that moment? Um, yeah, look, I don't, I don't necessarily set too many goals. Um, I, I do, I do like to, you know, I feel like sometimes at times, if you, if you set yourself a goal, you sometimes can underachieve or if you achieve it, you could have achieved a lot more. Um, so, you know, I quite like to, to, as they say, shoot for the stars and fall on the moon. Um, you know, I just want to score as many runs every game I play, you know, I want, you know, and I don't want to put a figure on that because the day that you do get to 100, you know, you don't want to relax and go, oh, which is I've reached my goal. You know, I wanted a hundred for the year and I've got it in the first game. Yeah. You know, if you get that hundred, you want that 200 uh, or you want that 300 or, you know, whatever it is. Um, you know, if you get a hundred the first game and you get another hundred the second game, you don't want to all of a sudden take your foot off the pedal. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're almost subconsciously satisfied because you've already achieved what you wanted to achieve. Yeah, and then and in relation to uh, facing spin and seam, is there different techniques that you use? So I know a few years back, England obviously said that um, Duncan Fletcher, when he was coached, spoke about being a slightly lower in your stance to a spinner so you can get the flight and the trajectory of the ball. Is that something that you also do? Yeah, definitely. Um, I've got you know a, a fair few different setups for for different types of spin: left arm, right arm, off spin, leg spin. Um, you know, seam, swing, you know, whatever it is. Um, you know, I've got a few different things that I that I tend to do um, in those conditions and 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 for those um, you know particular bowlers that, that that you know that's part of my game. And then in relation to your uh, kit itself, 
Uh, with regards to your bat, do you have any preferences in the shape of the bat? Look, uh, I'm, you know, if, if the guys from Kookaburra hear this, they'll, they'll be like, Marnus is probably one of the fussiest players they've ever had. Um, but yeah, that, look, that I'm not really too fast on, on how the bat looks aesthetically. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm all about the ping of the bat and the feel and, and making sure the handle is right. So I've got specific handle measurements that, that I like, that I you know want to have it exactly right so my hands feel perfect every time I pick the bat up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, apart from that, you know, there's a few things, you know, I like probably, you know, between 2.9 and 2.93 uh, weight, but I'm not too fussy about weight. It's like you said, it's more about feel and about how the bat, you know, picks up. Um, over anything and then before one of the last or recent test series uh, there was actually a video or a picture of you standing on your bat over the boundary rope which I can't imagine the uh, the guys at Cookborough are too too amused about but what were you doing there oh last year uh, yeah um, so that was actually um, a, a bat that was rehandled uh, one of my actually that was the bat I got um, a fair few a few of those test hundreds with um, and it got rehandled, and and when the handle comes back after it's been rehandled, it's quite stiff. Uh, the handle is quite uh, rigid, um, yeah. so especially when you use it with a used bat that's already you know molded beautifully, um, yeah, I find that that stiffness creates a little bit you know the, the ball doesn't ping as well. So I try to make sure I loosen that that handle up over the the rope. And just get a bit of flex in it so that you know it's a little bit you know more consistent and then finally to finish um just a little bit on bowlers and people you faced etc so who's the quickest bowler that you've ever faced um look i think joffre is by far um yeah joffre by far uh he's he bowled uh he bowled pretty fast in that um in that ashes series especially um that spell he bowled at Lords um, to Steve Smith was one of the fastest spells I saw um, from the sideline, and then obviously facing it, um, you know, it was a it was a very fast spell. So um, yeah, that was by far the fastest I think I faced. And then the, the toughest bowler, which might not necessarily be the fastest, it might be a, a spinner, for example. Yeah. Um, look, I, I really enjoyed this summer's battle with. Um, with Ravi Ashwin, um, uh, it was a very um, tactical battle. Um, the way he bowled, the way he crafted, the way he used his wrist and spun the ball, undercut, overspin. Um, I really enjoyed that challenge. It was um, something that I haven't experienced before, but um, I love that challenge. Um, one of the best spells I faced was uh, Ben Stokes bowled a, bowled a spell at Headingley. Um, that I think it was about a 12 over spell. Um, and that was one of the best spells I faced. I think me and Matthew Wade were out there at the time and we were just, you know, well, we kind of kept saying one more over, one more over, you know, he's, he's going to be done. And it was like six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, Like he just kept going and kept going. Um, so that was a, you know, that was one of the best spells I've ever faced. And then your favorite ground in the world? Um, look, I, it, it's tough not to say Lords. Um, you know, I've only played one day of cricket at Lords, but um, it was very special. Um, so it's one I'll never forget. But my favourite ground to play at, um, in terms of the wicket and the conditions, is the Gabba. Um, I love playing there. Um, you know, obviously a little bit biased because I've I've played, um, I've played. There's my home ground for Queensland. Um, so it's definitely one that I that I treasure. And then your favourite memory in cricket so far? Um, favourite memory in cricket? Oh, look, retaining the Ashes was a, was a pretty special moment, um, something that, you know, we haven't done um, in a long time. Um, but probably to narrow it down, yeah, you know, looking back, um, you know, that innings that I played at Lords, um, you know, just with the circumstance and obviously being the first concussion sub was a pretty cool memory. And then a bit of a tricky one, but favourite coach or a couple of coaches that you've, you've sort of worked with um, and it can be from a technical point of view or even a motivation point of view? Um, yeah, look, I, I've, 
I've had a batting coach since um, since I was 18, 19. Um, I've used Neil DaCosta. Um, he's been great. You know, we've been working together on, on the game for, for a long time before I came into the system. Um, uh, I really enjoyed um, Matt Maynard um, and learning from him at Glamorgan. Um, you know, I, learn, I learned a lot about um, the way he... Um, you know, the way he goes about the game. Um, I love the way he thinks about the game. And, and, and you know, he taught me a lot um, and probably opened my mind up a lot about, um, you know, what I could, you know, what my potential was and, and, and what I could do if I just trusted myself. So I really enjoyed, um, you know, enjoyed, enjoyed him. And your best mate in cricket? <laughs> Bit of a That's leading really question. <laughs> No, nah, look, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. Um, you know, I've 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 played with uh um I've played with a lot of, you know, my Queensland teammates since I was very young. Um we grew up playing under twelves together, you know, the likes of me, Mitchell Swepson, um, James Pearson, you know, like, you know, we've been very close for a long time. Um, you know, the likes of me and Steve Smith, you know, we we get along really well and we love talking about the game. Um David Warner, you know, I love, I love talking to him about the game and, and learning from him and, um, you know, and, and the list goes on, Tim Payne. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's heaps of guys that are, that I've learned a lot of. Um, so it's hard to probably give you, you know, who's your favorite cricketers, yeah. but, you know, um, you know, I think, you know, I get along with it with everyone, you know, Pat Cummins, Josh Hazelwood, Nathan Lyon, you know, I, I love learning. I love, you know, everyone's company. But, yeah, tough to, tough to pick one there. And then probably equally as tough, but the best player that you've played with or against? Oh, look, Steve Smith is certainly um, the best player that I've played with. Um, he's, you know, I mean, it's tough. I'm talking from a batting perspective. Pat Cummins, the way he's going and the way he's bowling and consistency and his physical physicality, um, you know, is amazing. But yeah, those two are the best players I played with, uh, and, and and players I played against. Um, you know, I've played against obviously Virat Kohli, and uh, um, especially, um, you know, I played a one-day series against. Him and he was he was incredible the way he was you know able to just be consistent you know runs after runs after runs um you know so he was definitely one that I was um you know very impressive um and enjoyed playing against and then finally what's the best bit of advice that you've been given and what advice would you give to someone who's aspiring to be a young professional now yeah um look uh I think one of the best advices, one of the best pieces of advice I was given was by my batting coach, Neil DaCosta, um, when it was um, just after a series um, against Sri Lanka and, you know, I had a decent series and I was going over to Glamorgan and he said, um, like, nothing else matters. You know, like, we've worked on your technique, everything. You've just got to trust it. But nothing else matters but runs. And I think that was that one moment that I can remember in my life um, that I just, I remember that shifting, you know, I didn't care about having the best defense or the best pull shot or the best cover drive or making sure it was the perfect player. But all I cared about was making runs on the day. Um, and whatever that took, if that took me doing something completely different, or if that took me sticking to the process or being patient, or if that took me having to bat out of my comfort zone, um, you know, I was willing to do it where prior to that, I don't think I ever was willing to, to change. I just wanted to be the perfect player. No, it's been fascinating chatting to you. Uh, obviously it's not something that I ever envisaged that I'd be able to do, but um, it's been really fascinating. I've really enjoyed our, our chat today. So thanks very much for taking your time out and coming on the pod. Mate, it's my absolute pleasure, mate. It was, um, it was a pleasure talking. always love talking about the game and talking about cricket. So uh, my pleasure and enjoy your night. Thank you very much.